Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Chris Nelson. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Three candidates face off at the Chamber of Commerce debate held on Saipan. Candidates were asked a series of questions, including what to do with the casino in Garapan. And police have arrested one and are looking for another in a home burglary. In sports, we'll take a look at a young star who's taking after her mom. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. We've made a lot of breakfasts and along the way we noticed something was missing. A warm cinnamon roll for breakfast or with breakfast. A fluffy blueberry muffin from the drive-thru you're already driving through. A glazed apple fritter which might find its way into your coffee. These are options every breakfast haver should have. And now they do. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Good day, and good evening, Commonwealth. You're watching the Friday night, the weekend edition of the Channel 2 News. Forty days until the election, Representative Tina Sablon, Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios, and Governor Ralph Torres were on the stage in front of supporters last night debating the issues. Let's take a look. Last night at the World Resort in Susupi, three candidates for governor participated in the Chamber of Commerce debate. Democrat Tina Sablon in blue was on the left side of the room with supporters directly in front of her. Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios in the middle and Republican Governor Ralph Torres on the right with supporters in red. Candidates started off with opening statements. When the people of the Marianas voted 50 years ago for the covenant, we began our journey to fulfill the promise of self-government of a closer relationship with the United States and a decent standard of living for all. We emerged from the darkness of war, centuries of colonial occupation, generations of trauma, and we moved into the light of hope for a bright and beautiful future. The founding mothers and fathers of this commonwealth had big dreams, and we should too. Ladies and gentlemen, our commonwealth is at a crossroads, and there is so much at stake in this election. We have important decisions to make about our leadership in government and the kind of future we want for our commonwealth. We can't choose the status quo. We now have a governor who's been raided by the FBI, impeached by the House, and is facing criminal charges. We have a failed, unfinished casino in the heart of Garapan, and an administration that's run deficits for six straight years and is still spending money like there's no tomorrow. We can choose the same old leadership, and we will get the same old school politics. Or we can choose to change. Layla Fleming Stafford and I are running to be your next governor and lieutenant governor because we recognize the need for change is now. If we are to have hope again for that bright and beautiful future, and when we talk about change, we're talking about good governance. 
Because you deserve a government that is fair, honest, and fiscally responsible, and leaders that you can trust. That is the good governance that a Sublan staff administration will do. On the morning of September 7, 2019, 10 months after I was inaugurated as your lieutenant governor, one thing became crystal clear for me. The Commonwealth lost its way. The administration lost the trust of our people, and people lost faith, unfortunately, in our government. Seeing the FBI read the inner sanctum of your office shocked me. I was disappointed by the betrayal of public trust that I watched. That was a turning point for me. Unconsciously, or I made a decision to not be a partner with a person whose actions were the subject of federal investigation and would subsequent, be subsequently impeached by the House of Representatives and today is being charged by the Attorney General's office. Dave and I will work to rebuild your confidence in your government through transparency, accountability, and the strict adherence to the rule of law. We will su support a robust tourism and military economy, and we will reduce the high debilitating, high cost of utilities through alternative energy. We will enhance our public health care system and we will support, we will support our retirees. We will provide education, prioritize education. Ladies and gentlemen, on day one, David and I will open the books, check the books, and disclose the books to you, the people of the Commonwealth, and no subpoena will be necessary. In this election, you'll have the opportunity to choose who will continue to lead the Commonwealth. As your governor, I stand by my record of accomplishments, and I ask that they stand by their record on what they have done for the Commonwealth. Over the next hour, I will be gladly embrace criticism, but not misinformation. As your governor, I spearheaded the most successful COVID-19 task force in the nation, while no playbook ever existed. Remember that FEMA projected what would happen in May 2020. Over 6,000 cases, over 400 will be hospitalized, and over 300 people, of our own people, casualties. Our ER will be backed up, hospital beds will be insufficient, and the ward will be overcrowded. That did not happen under my leadership. As I made numerous tough decisions, even though they are unpopular, to safeguard our health and welfare, to typhoon you to cellular micro a super typhoon you too. While my critics have wide, widespread misinformation, we continue to make improvements to protect our people. Look around. CIP projects, 100% retirement, plus bonuses, Pacific mini games, quota, substance abuse, airlines, tourism, and diversification of our economy. As we go through tonight's debate, remember that my track record of progress and success speaks for itself. Thank you, Yeliso. Maraming salamat po. It's Bruce Moxie. One of the initial questions last night centered around how to encourage students who head off-island to study to come back and live and work. One of the biggest reasons why a lot of our students, after graduating from college, do not return home is the lack of opportunity and the low pay scale that we provide. As governor, we will take a look at raising the minimum wage. I know that is probably going to be something very unpopular with the Chamber of Commerce, but at the end of the day, do we want to continue sending our kids to school and not coming back home? We need to provide them with that opportunity. Of course, in order for us to entice our students, our kids to come back, you need to build a strong economy. 
That's exactly what my administration has been doing to bring back the economy. We have new airlines coming in, we have airlines that came in, and we are working to increase that tourist source by increasing over to Australia. Folks, if we increase our tourism to Japan, Korea, Australia, and any other travel source, those investors will also invest here in the cinema. And I've been proud to say that we need to continue to support NTI and support our locals here. At the same time, we have DOD, $165 million. That's a project that our folks from the States can come back and realize that there is opportunities here. I agree completely that the time is now to raise the wages and the standard of living and, and strengthen worker protections in our laws. And I have introduced a bill to do just that. And that is now pending in committee. Part of our Saban staff their plan for economic development is the Come Home Initiative, which is part of our Mariana Jobs Now program to match people with job opportunities and training opportunities and, and recruit people, recruit the, all the local talent that has left these islands to come back home. One of the things, one of the reasons people leave is not just for lack of opportunity, but because they believe that there isn't any fairness in opportunity. Just before intermission, the candidates were asked about the casino. What do you plan to do with the unfinished Imperial Palace Casino Resort in Garathan? And what do you think is the best way to handle the exclusive casino license and make this industry a viable tax revenue source? Our economy here, and I, I want to make this just for the record. I voted for the gaming industry for one reason and one reason only, is to protect all retirees because that was the only industry that was able and willing to provide funds for our retirees. And we do, we do have regulations to regulate our gaming industry. And if there's anything to change, if anyone's gonna complain, it is the legislature who makes laws and amend laws. I have not seen any bill to amend anything in regards to either gaming, whether to reduce it from exclusive or down to three or other business license. But for me, any businesses here in the cinema needs to do their share because we do have our enforcement. But at the end of the day, I will continue to provide and support businesses that will take care of our retirees. And I will be there to sign a law if there's any changes that needs to be done. Thank you. Gaming can be a productive part of our tourism economy if it's well regulated and if it's run by responsible operators who are selected in a fair and open bidding process. But this casino has been a complete and utter catastrophe. And again, the responsibility for that falls on this administration. And it all started with those fact-finding trips all expense paid, which Mr. Torres went on to Hong Kong and Macau. We don't know what happened on those trips, but we know the disaster that happened when they came back. And now, my administration will have a huge mess to clean up, thanks to them. The first thing that I will do, or propose to do, is put a lien on IPI's asset. I cannot believe that this government has yet to do that. They owe us $50 million. What are we waiting for? The second thing I'm going to open up, and I'm going to abolish exclusive casino licenses, and open up casino licenses and highly regulate them. We need to bet this is a very sensitive industry, and we need to properly bet the applicants and the proposals that come in. It's unfortunate that this is where we're at with that casino. I hope that one day soon, somebody is going to come up and do, make a proposal to take over that building, whether it's going to be a casino or Thank something you. else. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Flosses. The casino is the most regulated industry in the, in the world. And I am glad that to say that we have Gaming Commission who has cited the industry and it's already in court. It has that process moving forward. But you cannot change laws arbitrarily. You need laws to be passed by the legislature. And I urge the legislature 
to change the law so that I can implement them today. And I wish this law has been changed two years ago. Thank you. Tonight on Channel 2, right after this edition of the news, the 6 p.m. edition of the news, we're going to show the first half of the debate. That'll be six questions, and that's going to happen about 6.30 p.m. We do go a little bit long sometimes on Friday, but it will happen just after tonight's show. Second half of the debate will air also tonight, and that'll be after the 8 o'clock news replay. That'll happen about 8.30, and you'll be able to see that uh, over the, after the news replays throughout the weekend. Police arrested one and are looking for another in a Coblerville burglary incident. An arrest warrant was issued for Shina Castro and Mario Sablon. They are suspects in a burglary incident. Castro was picked up. Police say Sablon is still at large, and DPS says they're looking for the public's help in locating Sablon. The victim showed police surveillance footage of a burglary item stolen out of the house included an Echo Bush Cutter, Vizio TV, laptop, drone, and iPad. If you want to help DPS and you want to stay anonymous, you can call the Crime Stoppers hotline. That's at 670-234-7272. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Welcome back. You're watching the weekend edition of the Channel 2 News. Governor Ralph Torres says he's running on his record. We spoke with him just moments after last night's debate. Well, I want to thank the Seven Chamber. I want to thank them for, for coming here. I want to thank Patty for coming over from Guam. She did an excellent job. Um, you know, those are questions that, uh, that you put on, and I believe that I answered the questions according to, to what was asked. Um, I feel good of my answers, and Again, my record speaks for itself, um, and uh, like I said, I asked them what, what is the record uh, for the other candidates. The casino in Garapan is going to be a big issue sure. in this election. What, what is going to happen there if you are re-elected? Well, you know, it's in the courts, right? Uh, and I know that the Gaming Commission have done their share, their own citation and so forth, so it's in the court and we need to just wait until what the court says and then we go from there. And but what is, what's your position as as governor? Like what the the government can lean on, push and yeah, pull. Yeah, there's nothing we can do now because it's in federal court. But obviously, uh, we want to make sure that we maximize what what is being owed to the government, um, and make sure that uh, that industry will continue to survive. Whether uh, the legislature changes the law uh, or any amendment that the legislature uh, will be doing. CNMI representative and Democratic candidate Tina Sablon just after last night's debate. No big surprises. Um, I was wishing that we had more time for rebuttals, uh, more time to flesh out our ideas and, uh, and, and you know, the differences too among the candidates. Uh, but you know, maybe we'll have that opportunity with the next debate which is coming up on October 19th. Any uh, question where you felt like the differences between the candidates was illustrated perhaps the best? Gaming, yes, gaming. I mean, Ralph, Torres. The governor's position is this is in the courts. There's nothing that can be done. Is that is that true? Well, he described this as the, the most regulated industry. And I think our problem with this industry here is that it has been the most poorly regulated industry. There has been no compliance. I, I am honestly hard-pressed to think of a single law that hasn't been broken by this casino. And, and, and they have been allowed to continue with, without 
paying taxes without paying the license fee. Like finally, it took it took a long time for the Casino Commission to finally get its act together and at least try to suspend the license and then try to revoke it. Um, but but no, there there is it's not true at all that there is nothing else that we could do. Like I think we should begin undertaking this market feasibility study to do to really. Um, get like a professional opinion about whether this industry is even viable for the CNMI. Any progress on budget talks between the That's House and Senate? That's a good question. Senate. I've been checking in periodically. Um, I'm not on the conference committee, uh, so there are three members appointed from the House and from the Senate. Uh, so they've been meeting uh, as of this afternoon, and I think they're going to continue tomorrow. Um, I'm. I, I just heard that the Senate uh, went and issued the call for a session on October 4th which uh, tells me that we are likely to be going into a shutdown, unfortunately, um, if they're not going to act on, on any product until then. So, I mean, there's always the possibility of, of an emergency session being called before that, and I'm still hopeful that we could even get something done uh, tomorrow or, or this weekend, and, and then people can come back to work on Monday. Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios running with Saipan Mayor David Apatang. I think we all did well, and, but I felt very comfortable with uh, with uh, my answers and the model. But uh, you know, this is a this is the opportunity for the three of us to uh, show the people the type of leadership that we each are going to bring to the table uh, in this, this challenging time and. Uh, you know, Dave and I uh, uh, fully appreciate the people that are here. We appreciate the people that are watching. What do you think the biggest issue in this coming election is for you, the way you see it? What's the biggest issue? I think uh, one is to be very, very, very honest about the fiscal cliff that is impending. If uh, we don't get get bailed out by 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 the federal government again, but that, that is coming and uh, we need to shore up, we need to uh, make do with uh, less and that's, that's why I insisted that we will open the books, check the books and disclose the books so we all know where we're at. That's going to be critical. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific. Better together. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online, open seven days a week. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports, sports fans. fans.
Buenos sports fans, tonight we're going to take a look at a young sports fan who's taking after her mother. You can't always be the best. You have to remember that everyone makes mistakes sometimes. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Another young multi-sport athlete from Saipan International School is our young star for tonight. Here is Leilani Rosala. My name is Leilani Rosala. I'm nine years old and I go to the SIS and my favorite sport is volleyball. Rosala enjoys playing volleyball and she's encouraging other kids to try it. It's fun and I mean, it's not really tiring. <laughs> Um, it's a good sport to play and I encourage everybody to play the sport. Aside from volleyball, she also plays other sports. I play soccer. There was this one time I played badminton and I run a lot. I swim, I bike. Uh, I don't know if that's all, but that's some of it. Yeah. Rizal is a member of Pyrie Football Club, and for her, playing soccer is not just about winning, but to have fun. Uh, I like that no matter, if, even if you lose, it, it's just, it's fun playing. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, so, I played a soccer game a couple of days ago, and we lost by a big gap, but it didn't really matter. My coach said it didn't matter about the score. It mattered about if we had fun, and we all agreed, so yeah. Last month she competed in Taga Kids Triathlon and won second place in her age category. So I've done it a, long, a lot of times, but this one was really, um, really fun because I went against kids that I haven't went against in a while. Some of my friends were there, and I got second place in women's, uh, so that was fun. Rizal likes to read, play with her friends, and watch TV when she's not doing any sports activities. I like to watch TV. <laughs> I like to play with my friends and um, read. And I also like to draw. According to her, being active in sports gives you a lot of health benefits. Every time I do it, it's just, it's good to get it off my shoulders to worry about that I don't need to worry about getting like overweight or something. It just, exercising is fun and everybody should do it and it's just good for you. Great. Rosala idolizes her mom, Kathy, who's also an active athlete and participated in this year's Pacific Mini Games. Yes, it's really awesome what she does. I mean, she was in the mini games and it didn't matter what place she got, because she got first place in my heart. To be active in sports is her advice to those young kids out there. If you don't like running, if and you don't like doing this, then you could try to do a different sport. Then maybe you'll like it. Just keep trying different sports, and maybe you'll find the one you really like, and keep doing that one. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Make you an offer you can't refuse. Bring your friends in for the best night out at Godfather's Bar in Garabin. 
Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfathers has daily food and drink specials, like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week. Located on Palm Street in Garrison, everybody is family at Godfather's Bar. Bada bing, bada boom. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym and today I want to go over some exercises that you can easily apply into your current exercise program. Now I have here with me Vince and he's going to be demoing some of those exercises. Now the first one today is going to be a one-arm dumbbell row. Before I have Vince here execute a few reps, what we want to remember with virtually any exercise is your setup. If you start in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common mistake with here is obviously a, a rounded upper back and as you can see he's not very rigid or stable so what we're gonna do is correct that just a little bit so his supporting arm and his leg that's supported on the bench as well is gonna we want to lock that in open up that leg a little bit to allow for a better path on that dumbbell with the elbows coming up way too high you can see the shoulders riding forward and that's not what we want so ideally well, what you want to think about is pulling with your elbows and stopping right at the midline of your body so in this position right here you can feel his entire upper back along with his core. Here's your weekend weather report. It's going to be mostly sunny with isolated showers. East winds 9 to 11 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and some thunderstorms are out there. East winds 9 to 11 miles per hour. High looking like 87, low of 77, humidity 79%. Tomorrow, partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East winds 10 to 14 miles per hour. High of 87, low of 77. The marine forecast combined seas of three to four feet. Those are expected the next few days, building to five feet at times east of the islands. East winds will be 10 to 15 knots. Wind waves, two feet or less, east swell two to three feet. Sunrise, 6.06 a.m. High tide, 9.54 p.m. tonight. Low tide, 4.41 p.m. And sunset at 6.07 p.m. That's gonna do it for us here on the weekend edition of the news. Have a great weekend.